Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of Hot Takes, or I went to the internet and asked you guys for your hot takes on anything, and uh, we're going to talk about the best ones here. Literally any famous song that is overplayed is kind of mid. This is just a bad take. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is just a bad take. Um, I mean, an EDM world, Skrillex, uh, Dead Mouse, early days when he was a, more, a little bit more popular. I mean, and then you got like, what? Kendrick Lamar, Beyonce, Dua Lipa, Billie Eilish. Those are all like fantastic artists that are often overplayed, I think, for a majority of people. And so that's just, this is just a bad take. I, I understand the sentiment that like more often than not, something that's more poppy or more commercially successful is going to be less uh, unique or creative, but that's just not the case all the time. I would say it's about 25% of the case. It's, it's not that. Skrillex hasn't made a good song for over a decade. Moreover, his last good song was Holden On Remix, and most of his songs from there on went awful. Uh, wow, um, that's crazy to say that his entire Quest for Fire album was was awful and not even good, uh, because it's a fairly beloved record. It paved the way for the music industry or the EDM industry um, the past year and a half at this point. Uh, I just, I don't know how you say that about, like, I get not liking some of it, but to say that it's all awful, nah, dog. As much shit as Excision gets on Twitter, I genuinely think he makes some of the best live shows, at least visually. I mean, you can only do so much with a mostly dubstep show. I mean, I gotta agree. I think Excision gets a lot of flack, um, and part of it I think is rightfully so. I don't think a lot of Excision stuff is super out there or fantastic writing and mixing and quality. And I think a lot of it is just kind of just blah, dubstep and, uh, he's, he's got his own niche there, but you can't deny that his live shows look, uh, fantastic. They look and the feeling of it and just the whole, the whole aura around the Excision shows are, are, are pretty magical. So um, you, you, can't, you can't ignore that. Mr. Bill is one of the great sound designers of our time, but he can't write music. This is an interesting one for a couple reasons. One, I would say, first and foremost, to be able to be so good at one thing, one aspect of the songwriting produ production side of things and not be good and be so bad at something else is kind of crazy. Um... But that's to say, I I sort of agree with this to some extent. I love Mr. Bill's sound design. I think the creativity, the just like the just like out there thought processes and uh, ele elements he adds to his songs are are great. His songs can be quite linear at times, though, and I think there's a lot of times where I'm like, oh, this is a great idea for a track, but just didn't quite go where I'd hoped it was going to, or kind of just went in a more of a a more straightforward by the books kind of number. So. As much as I think this is a crazy comment, I kind of get it. My biggest hot take is that Anthony Fantano should stop reviewing music genres that he does not understand. He has really good takes for popular music, but when he listens to certain EDM, he can be an actual asshole about it, like that Hades Sudden Death collab recently. Um, I th disagree with this for the for a couple reasons, but also sort of agree with it. I, I totally get that um, reviewer, especially like even myself that does stuff uh, a fair amount. Um, there's there's your niche that you know really well. Uh, Fantano knows pop and hip hop and 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 like experimental metal stuff really well. He knows that stuff really really well, but. Knowing that stuff already gives you a really good indicator of what other genres are. Like, I know Fantano doesn't listen to a ton of country and EDM, but when he reviews that stuff, I don't go, oh, he doesn't listen to that or he doesn't know that stuff because he's pop and hip hop or whatever. But like, no, like he has a really good grasp on what is good, what sounds sonically pleasing and what sounds not pleasing at all. And so I think there's some truth to it where, yes, I get it. He doesn't fully understand the, the background of everything, but I, I don't think you should uh, flat out just say that you should stop reviewing stuff you don't know about. Um, and know about is with like a caveat, like know about, yes, if you don't know the ins and outs of something, don't really review it. But Fantano does put his work in and he really does get to the nitty gritty about what a lot of the stuff is and the behind the scenes and, and the what inspired certain projects and records. And so I think he does really, I think he does a lot more research than I think a lot of you realize. And this might be one of my biggest hot takes here, but um, the stuff, the general stuff that Fantano would be 
commenting on, like I guess Hades Sudden Death is a little bit more niche, but the regular EDM that he would comment on is more often than not the popular stuff that's really not that great. He doesn't go to the niche. He doesn't go to a cloudy sky. He doesn't listen to these kind of artists. He's not going to listen to the Chime album or the Night Punk record. He's he's not going to do that um, because that's just all that's an initiative, a niche of EDM and it's just not the popular stuff. And so I, I get that. And so my, my, my bit of the hot take here is that like the general stuff that Fantana would have on his radar is the not great stuff of EDM. And so when he constantly gives EDM stuff or dance records poor scores, it's because the really popular stuff often is not great in the EDM world. Music doesn't need to have the best mixing ever or the most out there unique sound design of all time to be enjoyable. Music can still be enjoyable without being perfect or unique and the stick up their ass Twitter junkies believe it needs to be things to qualify as music. Um... I mean, yes and no. I agree with the sentiment that you it doesn't need to have all of the things to make a really good song or like have the best mixing and whatever and sound design to be enjoyable because I think that's where the, the term of guilty pleasure comes from where I can listen to a song and be like, wow, I think the song is mixed horribly. I think the song structure is not great. I think the singing is not good either. But damn, I love the song. Uh, so like that's uh, the greatest example for me is Jonas Brothers Walls uh, with John Bellion. I, I know the song is really bad, but I just love it for some reason. And so I get that. But also like your song needs to have some semblance of, of good sound design and good mixing. It needs to be at least a little good in some capacity at least. So I, 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 I get it. Every genre has potential to be good and there are no exceptions. Um, it's funny because as soon as I saw this, my first thought was I was like extra tone, extra tone for sure. And then the comment below it was extra tone. And so though that's kind of a meme genre. So I don't really know if I count that. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting one. And I would, I would have to say for the most part, yes. Um, there, there has to be some, like, there is no exception. I think more often than not genres lend themselves to be not as good as some other genres can be, but you can't deny that there are some, there's some gold in, in every genres. And I think when you get to the really nitty gritty of something like an extra tone or something like that, um, it just, it's a little bit more on, on the meme side. And if we're going to talking main subheadings, like your, your rap, your country, your R and B, um, yes, for sure. Uh, every genre has a potential to be good. The chain smokers, 2015 to 2019 era will never be replicated by any other EDM act. It was the peak that any EDM artist could achieve. I would generally agree with this, I think, for the most part. Um, Skrillex's era earlier was a little different. Um, it was more of your really, really, like, obviously, in-your-face EDM. It's the, the dubstep, uh, Complextro, Electro House stuff. But I, I agree with this, I think, for the most part. The Chainsmokers came on the scene as this, like very much electro dance, this like dance pop group. And they were very much categorized as EDM, as electronic music, but just had the most commercial pop twinge, tinge to the whole thing. And so I, I would agree. And I think because the Chainsmokers have lost a lot of their, their luster now with the mainstream crowd, I don't think we'll see another act be as popular um, and dominate as much of the space uh, as representing a, a specific overarching genre as the Chainsmokers did. Drift Funk can be likable to me if it wasn't those same samey cowbell and average Drift Funk beats. The new Thirst and Nufori track got me hooked and there are more unique funk tracks out there. Uh, I would agree with this for the most part. Um, I think the reason that I said a long time ago that I think it was another Hot Takes video that Drift Funk was, was dying was because I heard the same samey cowbell beats and the Drift Funk synths and it's just it was just like the so it was so boring and the songs were short and I just didn't think it was going anywhere. But recently we have found Found, uh, or I've I've seen that that funk has been mixed with a ton of different things. The the trance, bass house, garage, drift funk is finding its way into a ton of different genres, and it's become like a supporting act to um, a track now, where it's it sounds it sounds drift funk ish. It sounds funk ish, but it is like a bass house track or garage track, and that's where the 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 real like. Um, yeah, commercial appeal can come in from a track. So um, I, 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 I agree. 
EDM labels that cater to a wide variety of genres, such as Monster Cat or NCS, will eventually fall off because of how musically diverse they constantly need to be to please a wide audience, and many groups of people still maintain a high standard. Instead, smaller, artist-run labels that release specific genres and styles, such as Vision or Sable Valley or Rushdown, will thrive and grow. These smaller labels can actually invest the time in looking for up-and-coming artists and producer uh, skill and invest their time and resources into promoting them. Uh, yes and no. I think you're on to something here, but I don't think you realize how, uh, how benefitly, uh, how mutually beneficial those relationships are, those labels. Um, I don't think you realize how, how much benefit there is for Chime releasing on Rushdown and releasing on Monster Cat. Um, because like you said at the end there, when they have, they're looking for more time there, I think the smaller labels are the ones that can more, I would say better find those more niche artists and those up and coming artists and the, and, and really invest in those skills. But it's the labels like Monster Cat or NCS that, that gives them more recognition. It's the end statement there when you're saying and invest the time and resources into promoting them. That's what the big labels do. That's what the big labels do. I think the smaller ones find the talent and they bring them up. But I think it's the big labels that really do a lot of the promoting. And that's why we see a lot of people release on a bunch of different labels. And there's not really exclusive label stuff out there other than a few here and there. But um, I, I think they work a lot more harmoniously together than I think you may think they do. With only a couple of exceptions, the first that come to mind are Ashes, Wild, Youth, and Bridges Between. Every melodic bass album is mid the genre is so based on a formula relying on specific, pleasing sounding chords and vocal styles that can't be innovated on enough to be truly great or botched enough to be truly bad. Wow, Landon, that is uh, that's that's quite the comment there, and I would have to agree pretty much wholeheartedly on this one. I think there are a couple of exceptions here and there, but I do I do agree. I think a lot of the, mel- the melodic bass stuff is, for the most part, generally just mid. It's really hard to mess up, and it's really hard to do really well and, and be really out there. You really need to have these very complex storylines or have this stuff like the the chime album um or you need to have something just like be the goat in in mixing or sound design like um like au5 was and so yeah it's uh it's it's i would yeah i i I like i hard agree with this i do like the comment here that the genre is so based on a formula trying on specific pleasing sounding chords and vocal styles like yes it, it it feels super formulaic there's a lot of um, even color base nowadays that I, I'm finding is a little bit more on the formulaic side or people are leaning more towards that, I would say. I think people just hear maybe melodic bass or they hear at times, maybe color bass isn't quite there yet, but specifically with mo- melodic bass, they go, oh, this is the sound that does really well. And so I'm just going to do this. I, I'm just going to make it sound like this and not try to make it super out there or really creative or try to bend the 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 ear on what is normal and not. And I think a lot of it is just, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just they know it works and so they do it time and time again without so much innovation. I'm way more interested in smaller names today than most of the bigger names in EDM. Skrillex has not been good in a long time. Well, another one where people aren't liking Skrillex here, but again, that's crazy. But um, this is an interesting comment, and I brought this up for one reason, is because uh, this this is a good sign for you, personally. Um, if you're right now and you're going, hey, the big names don't sound good to me anymore. David Guetta sounds like trash EDM. The Chainsmokers sound like trash. Steve Aoki sounds like trash. I want these weird niche artists that barely have any followers. That means you're really actually getting into the industry and you're really getting into what makes EDM great. Um, because a lot of the surface level artists, though a lot of the outward facing artists that represent EDM as a whole to commercial listeners, um, like I said earlier, are ones that just aren't that good. It, it, and that's and that's up for really, really any genre out there, any subgenre of music, whether again, it's R&B, rap, metal, rock, pop, anything. There's the outward facing artist in that represent those genres are more often than not um, pretty mid, pretty average, because that's what you need to have to have commercial success. More often than not, again, more often than not, this isn't the case always, just the most bland, unoffensive, vanilla stuff will do well charting wise. And so I think this is a really good sign that you're actually really getting into the nitty gritty of stuff and you're really getting into artists that that make really fascinating music. That Skrillex comment is is no go for me. EDM trap has aged worse than bro step. While 2010's dubstep died out, it managed to evolve and influence other genres such as color bass. While EDM trap has been in the same spot for almost a decade. 
Uh, yes and no, which is, I feel like my answer all the time here. Uh, I agree with what you're saying for the most part. Um, I think there's a really fine line between trap and hybrid trap. I think your rate basic trap, like your trap nation kind of style trap stuff. That's a lot of it is, is just remixes. A lot of it is big fancy remixes that got really dull, really fast. Um, and there was a time where it, it, it just took over everything, but now it's just the same thing over and over and over again and stuff that I just don't even bother to listen to anymore. I think it's a fairly dead genre. Hybrid Trap, on the other, chan on the other hand, I think is a lot more um, uh, diverse and it's actually grown a lot and really found its own fantastic niche. I think Sable Valley is a great example of Hybrid Trap that that just sounds really good. The label has done a great job of of taking what once was a really commercial and really popular sound and making it a lot more, a lot less formulaic, I would say, and a lot more grand and stylistic and creative and bringing on artists that um, push the boundaries of what is Hybrid Trap. So uh, for regular Trap, yes. Uh, for hybrid trap, no. Vocal chops are the worst thing to happen to EDM. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, no. I I don't even know what to say about this one. This is an odd one because like I I think a, a lot of it depends on on what you're listening to and how you feel like they're using it. But I feel like more often than not, EDM is like the only genre that does vocal chops. So I think it's a very specifically EDM style of thing. And so um, other than other than maybe hip hop, but. I like I I would say no. I love a ton of garage stuff, and a ton of garage uses a ton of vocal chops, and I've never not been a fan of them. Um, so this is interesting. This has maybe opened my eyes to a wider thought process of mine internally. This is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs>